So a lot of people that would would watch, you know, this conversation that we're having right now are probably lower and mid-level leaders. So what happens when they're in an organization where they have, you know, a number one guy and a, the guy who's sitting in the second chair who has a natural tendency to support what he wants to do and is really in charge of the implementation and making sure that that vision is executed. So, you know, I'm, I'm down in the organization and this stuff starts, I, I hear murmurings of this or this is starting to roll out and man, I just have, I have a lot of pause and, and I'm really wanting to take a step back. I'm, I'm hoping that the organization can stick, take a step back. How do, I, how do I process that? How do I raise that up and bring that to the leadership above me? Well, first I'd say that those feelings are completely instinctual because when there's change, it signals a fear of an unknown and fear is danger. And so immediately we're gonna fight something or we're gonna just step back and flee it. So instinctual, instinctually, that's exactly what most people feel in that situation. But I think you owe it to yourself and the organization to process and to try to understand why and then to bring issues and concerns to the center stage and really go and seek those answers. Because if you don't, then you'll fall into a drift that could just be a drift that's mm -hmm. not authentic and real and you'll rob yourself of understanding the true intention and the ability to lead the people that you're responsible to in the direction that the whole organization needs to go in. And I think if your culture is, whether you're large or small, if you've created a culture from the top that says everyone here matters and everyone's opinion and their perspective of how we can move forward best matters, then that's really where it starts. So if you're in an environment that that, that already exists, then you've already got permission to bring whatever it is you're, you have an opinion on to the table and it, and it matters. Most of the time that's not true. Most of the time in most organizations, there's a level maybe, maybe two down, not very often three down within the hierarchy that you're, you're getting input from those, from those leaders. But the rest of the people who exist there, their opinion doesn't really matter. It doesn't, if it, if it surfaces, it takes it a long time it's being, it's being um, you know, clouded by the people above them. So I think that's, you got, you, uh, my answer to your question is, is you almost have to back up and, and start with this understanding of what does it look like for us to build a culture that says my opinion matters wherever I am in the organization. And until that happens, you're not going to have a lot of luck or you're not going to have a lot of, of, um, of value if you bring something to the table from a lower level in the organization because nobody's gonna listen to you anyway. But that's a frustration that oh, absolutely. most people will feel and they'll go, yeah, like Brad, I'm there. I, I work in an environment that I'm five rungs down from the top and nobody cares about what I have to say. That's a problem, especially going forward. That's a problem. So as the leader, whoever that is, they have to solve that issue. You know, culture building is, is the leader's responsibility. I would say self-leading too is important in this. Mm -hmm. So all of us, wherever we are within our organizations, we have a choice. I mean, we can become a victim of the circumstance or we can empower ourselves to go and to learn more and do those things. So it's a self-leadership choice as well.